Hello all loyal subscribers and welcome to my channel. Today, we return to the 1982 Yamaha XJ750 Seika project after a long time. This project is meant to be done with my children, while teaching them and of course learning myself. Last time we worked with my oldest son, and today there are all children on stage. In this episode, we remove the exhaust manifold, carburetors, valve cover, camshafts and cylinder head. The main reason for removing the cylinder head is the bad thread of the spark plug on the cylinder number 2. Spark plug issue was probably one of the many reasons for the poor engine running, as you can hear in episode 1. Again, I'll try to walk you through, what we do and how, so that you can get tips for doing your own project. Briefly about the background of the project and where we are going with it. I bought this bike last fall as an unfinished project, with the idea of building a cafe racer or scrambler or something in between. We have go through some ideas with my oldest son and I'm turning to building a scrambler style bike and monoshock conversion. Things to think about is, the compatibility of the gimbal drive with the monoshock. And mainly how much room for movement does it have before it bottoms out in the lower position? Also, the idea of changing the USD bow from some motocross bike has been in mind. But what size motocross should it come from is a good question. We have a lot of 250cc to 450cc motocross front forks available. But are they too weak for such a heavy bike? If you have information or have made a similar change, drop a comment and tell us what to consider. On this bike, the exhaust manifold was attached with at least three different style bolts and nuts. The removal was straightforward in itself, we open all the bolts and nuts, pull the adapter rings to the back and wiggle the exhaust manifold off. If the exhaust manifold is tight, you can use a heavy fine-tuning hammer and gently tap the curves of the exhaust manifold to facilitate removal. Next, the carburetors are removed. The disassembly starts by loosening the air cleaner from the frame and carburetors. The air cleaner was attached to the frame with three nuts, and attached to the carburetors with clamps. After opening clamps and bolts from the air filter housing, open the carburetor clamps from the, the intake manifold. After that wiggle and pull out the carburetors. Be careful not to let your workmate's fingers get in the way. If the intake manifolds are very old and hardened, you can heat them to make removal easier and to prevent intakes from cracking. Hardened intake manifolds are good to replace in any case, so the use of more radical methods is also allowed. A small pat on the head and a few words of encouragement will quickly heal little fingers. The valve cover is attached with 6 Allen bolts per side. This time the bolts are unlocked in a random order. Looks like I got all the loose bolts. When the bolts are open, remove the valve cover from the cylinder head. In this case, we had to help the release a bit by a fine-tuned hammer and a screwdriver. I place the screwdriver between the outer edge of the bolt thread hole in the valve cover, and gently twist upwards. As you are still watching, I assume you are my kind of subscriber. So hit the subscribe button and bell icon, to keep up with this build.
I think I need to get some smaller gloves for the little guy. Despite the size of the gloves, all the bolts could be opened and it was great to see how enthusiastically the little man did his job. So to remove the camshafts and cylinder head you should go with the service manual directions. We did it bit differently, as I was too lazy to find a service manual. Steps are Step 1. Remove the cylinder head cover, that's done. Step 2. Remove the left crankcase cover, it's the pickup coil cover. We did not do that. Step 3. Remove the cam chain tensioner. We did not do this at this point. Step 4. Use a 19mm wrench on the timing plate flats to rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise, until the engine is at top dead center. Well, we did not do that either. But wait. We can save this with amazing mechanical knowledge, when we put this back together. Step 5. Remove the 4 cam sprocket bolts. Nope, not us. Step 6. Slip each sprocket off its mounting boss on the cam. Step 7. Remove the cam chain guide. Step 8. Remove the cam caps. Note the location of the cam caps. Directional arrows are cast on each cap and point toward the clutch side. This is important knowledge for reassembly. Some of the camshaft caps were a bit stuck, so we had to pry them off with a screwdriver. However, we used as little force as possible so that there are no scratches or marks on the aluminum surfaces. It is important to collect the cap steering sleeves or bushings. Step 9. Fasten safety wire to the cam chain, to prevent its falling into the crankcase cavity. Yes sir. This we did. I have learnt my lesson before. And slide the camshafts and sprockets from under the chain, and remove the camshafts and sprockets. Done. Step 10. Remove the front cam chain guide. Quest what? Hmm. Nope, we did not. It came out with the cylinder head. Step 11. Remove the spark plugs. Already out, I usually take them out as first thing. Step 12. Remove the cylinder head bolts and nuts in the numerical order as shown in manual. 
Start by loosening each nut half turn until all of the nuts are loose. Remove the cylinder head. Well we took them out in totally random order. I really don't know why I should open nuts in cross pattern. When tightening the nuts I do understand the meaning but not when opening. So I if someone has some kind of knowledge why, drop a comment or link to article about it. For the final removal of the cylinder head, we used a trusted fine-tuning hammer. I tapped the cylinder head in several different places to get it evenly off the ceiling surface. After removing the cylinder head, we noticed that the cylinder head gasket has leaked from the number one cylinder. This is also why it was a good thing that we decided to take it out. We also noticed metal debris on the number one and two pistons, the origin of which I could not find out with a quick investigation. Part of it must have come from a bad spark plug thread, but I still haven't come up with an explanation for the rest. The cylinder walls look fine, so I don't think the metal is from the piston rings either. What do you think, should I also remove the cylinder so I can check all the piston rings? Or do we blindly trust that they are okay? Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and like the video. I'm also linking here my CB750 Cafe Racer build video series and the first episode of my eldest son's Yamaha YZ125 project. So go check them out too.